Hey there everyone, Lord Fidget here with another episode of Aether Raids Offense. I hope you all had an excellent light season. I personally, uh, well, I had a weird light season. I actually almost didn't have enough uh, content to be able to put together an Aether Raids Offense video today. But it's not because I was doing badly, no, no, no. It's because a lot of the battles I was getting were just complete pushovers. And I don't mean pushovers in the sense that I've seen it a thousand times before so it's easy for me, but maybe intermediate at least for somebody who's unfamiliar. No, I mean like this was the penultimate battle of my Aether Raids offense season. I can't make Aether Raids offense content with this. Well, I could, but you'd all probably be incredibly bored. Like, oh, wow, he sent in Azura. Reinhardt attacked her four times. She took 14 damage, including the six from Fury. Like, <sighs> I don't know. It was weird. I had a weird light season. And on that note, I think it's probably a good idea to just transition into the battles that I did find worth showcasing. So, here we go. Alright, this is the first map up. I think I'm just gonna take to calling strategies like this a unit box strategy. The idea behind a unit box strategy is obviously that you take your units, you put them in a box, and if the opponents approach the box, bad things will happen to their soul. Uh, it tends to work better if you don't leave massive coverage gaps like they have over here on the left hand side. This is probably the most exploitable weakness for this map. If you were to break these structures and then snipe either Alm or Sothis, over the uh, over the Panic Manor and or Bright Shrine, then you can refresh your attacker and then just stick them somewhere along the left hand edge. And now the opponent can't actually reach you. They can't. Uh, the infantry units especially won't be able to get around the mountain. Uh, another thing this map could be susceptible to is Gale Force strategies. Because Sothis has her native Wrath, Times, Pulse, and Sirius, she will get that off after the first hit as long as your unit doesn't have guard, which why would they have guard on a Gale Force team when your goal is to get under half HP into Wings of Mercy range? Um, so once you get that, your unit is probably going to be under half HP, and then obviously that kicks off the warp Gale Force chain, and you can take out either five members and trap the last, or you could quite conceivably take out all six because those Aether structures are quite exposed and there shouldn't be too much trouble to pick them up before initiating combat. So that's really all there is to say about this map. I'm gonna go ahead and get into my approach now. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and send in my... uh... team? <laughs> I'm not really sure how to describe this. This is kind of a a hybrid type of raiding party. It's got a bit of offense and a bit of defense. Obviously, Sita and Azura both have Gale Force, which makes for some decent offensive presence. But then Sita also has Distant Counter and Pegasus Flight and Pulse Smoke, which gives her some defensive presence as well. And I, I'm going to go ahead and take advantage of that here in this clear. The raiding party is set up a little bit interestingly. As you might have noticed, Azura actually has the res refinement on her slaying lance instead of the speed refinement. And the reason for that is that she actually now ties Sita's res, which means that she is one point off from taking chill res instead of Sita. Now originally the idea was that eventually I'd pull a copy of Fury 4 and give it to her, but uh, now what I've what I have noticed is I actually have the Fae Pass right now just because Sophia was in the Resplendent distribution and I like Sophia so I decided let's go ahead and try this see how it goes and then just my luck Azura's next so that's going to be really cool and actually I'll probably just end up letting the pass expire afterward because I don't really don't really have many other heroes besides Sita of course that I would be interested in having Resplendent fair enough but I don't know we'll see you never really know with these things uh, but now I've gotten off on a tangent, tangent, my bad, so I'm gonna go ahead and get back to this clear now. I'm gonna move Azura into position here, and when the next turn starts, I'll have Annette provide a rally to Azura, then have Peony refresh her, so then Annette can warp to Sita and provide a rally to her as well. And that will increase both Azura's and Sita's mobility, and then I'll smite Azura over so she can take on Julia, and end up gale forcing through Julia, Sothis, Alm, and the enemy Azura. Now, I will have Sita end up attacking Azura from in front of Yoon, and that will ensure that Yoon cannot reach Azura, which is really the only threat to her. But since Azura has a slaying lance plus resistance refinement, she can take a round of combat with Ophelia. Although she apparently can't KO Julia in one round, what in the world? 36 speed. Azura has... okay, I guess her buff is nullified, so 42... oh shoot, really? She's got 40 speed after light and dark. Hmm. Four speed, really. 
and I can't really afford to not showcase this map, so if you'll excuse me for a moment, I'm actually gonna go ahead and take a minute or two to figure this thing out, and I will be back with you once I've got a solution. All right, I am back. Sorry about that. That was uh, kind of awkward. But let's go ahead and get this show on the road. I'm going to need two more turns to get set up here, which is unfortunate and cutting it quite close, but I will still be able to finish the battle. I'm going to be employing even crazier warp shenanigans than I was with my initial variant of this strategy. So if you were impressed by the first set of warp shenanigans I was doing, then this is really going to knock your socks off. And if you weren't impressed by the first set of warp shenanigans, well, then you're probably going to find this unimpressive as well. Uh, oh well. <laughs> Nothing I can do about that. So, I am ready to roll here, so let's go ahead and have Annette rally Sita. And then I will have Peony refresh Annette, which will provide the uh, Gentle Dream bonus to both Annette, who will warp to Air, and to Air, who can now warp to Azura. And now, Air Peony is in the same column as Azura, so Julia will be falling to Azura here. And that is exactly what I needed to happen. Julia doesn't have a guard because she has lightning dark. Grr. So she does, is not able to uh, prevent Azura from activating Gale Force. Now I'll need to have Sita attack Alm as well. And that will provide, uh, provide that pulse smoke effect on Ophelia. And finally, I will have my Azura refresh Sita and take out Azura from in front of Yoon as planned. So I'm actually kind of curious because Azura's buffs are going to be reversed now, although I'm pretty sure she only has plus three. Let's see how much Ophelia actually does to her. A two, nice. And then Yoon definitely is going to die to this encounter, leaving this uh, as a pretty, pretty quick cleanup here. I'm pretty sure Azura can take her out. Yeah, definitely. And that is it. Whew. All right, this is the second map. It kind of starts to get away from the unit box territory and into the space oppression territory. Uh, however, I do hesitate to call it a true space oppression map just because it doesn't have the sheer space coverage that I would expect for that kind of strategy. There's also a restore element. Note that Veronica does have restore equipped. However, if you're applying a debuff to Ophelia, I don't think Veronica is actually going to move from her current location, so I hesitate to call this a restore trap as well. I would say that the biggest weakness here is definitely over on the right edge of the map. You can break all the structures on this edge and have a range unit take out Peony. Then Ophelia will provide a rally to Azura, and if Azura is capable of dealing at least 5 damage to your attacker, then she will attack as well. The value of this, obviously, is that you've taken out both refreshers for free. Of course, there are still threats, both offensive and defensive, to contend with, but once the refreshers are gone, their movements will become much easier to predict and deal with. So, my strategy for this map really just boils down to walk the bulky dragons at the enemy. I would note that uh, this Panic Manor actually isn't a high enough level to affect the Doom, so I'm going to go ahead and provide her with the Fortify Res 4 Don't buff wait. so she can take less damage from Ophelia. So let's go ahead and just get this show on the road. I can evening. do this turn 1, no problem, I should Maybe get uh, Bernadetta yes. in here for a close guard so a Doom will take less damage okay. from Ellawood. But that should really be it. I'm thinking there's going to be a rally from Ophelia here. Yes, exactly as I thought. And then Elliewood attacks, takes a pretty good chunk of damage. Not as much as I'd have liked, just because he prevents, does prevent follow-ups, and there's no way a dude's going to match his speed, since he gets a plus seven speed steroid as well. So, actually... Yeah, Dune was able to take out Peony. That's interesting. I almost wasn't expecting her to be able to take, uh, get, yes. get the double at off without Vengeful Fighter active, but she pulled it off. So that's cool. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to smite Idun onto this trap and just have her take out Ike. I'll accomplish that by having Sothis just move aside to break the structure, but yeah, 60 attack on Veronica, that's that's actually interesting. I didn't expect her to have that much. I'm a little worried about Sothis's ability to handle two rounds of combat from her, and she will probably be taking two rounds if I have her in range, just because yes. Veronica should be attacking from a space that Azura can reach. The glimmer of uh, Adun, however, can absolutely take two rounds of combat with Veronica, so I'm okay with letting that happen. So let's go ahead and start getting set up to take the Aether M4 here. And after that, let's see how this goes. Okay, zero. Oh, one zero, not even two. And then, okay, two threes here. Hmm, interesting. So she can actually, since she gets, uh, is she getting Air's Heal? Oh, she is, wow. So, <laughs> so if she keeps getting Air's Heal, there's no way Veronica's going to be able to take her out. And I'm only on turn three, so I've got plenty of time here. 
Uh, she can one shot, but I don't know if that that's real. So let me go ahead and reposition air in that's here stress. and bump her up. And I yes. forgot that Smite bumps up two spaces instead of one. I thought she was going to land on the trap okay. for whatever weird reason. Uh, oh well, Veronica can't take out Bernadetta, so I'm going to go ahead and the break the Amphorae. And then... Oh, air has Mystic Boost, actually. So what I can do is I can have a Dune take out Azura, who has Triangle Adept. This will yes. this was actually even this was even an easy match without the Triangle Adept. And then I'll just yes. have Air block Veronica from reaching Sothis. So no trouble there at all. In fact, I'm thinking she probably is going to just attack Bernadetta. And yeah, exactly as I thought. And can actually can Bernadetta finish her off? Let me take a look here. She what, no. can deal. Oh wow, she does it. Does the job. Cuts right through that miracle. Nice job, Bernadetta. All right, that is it. Unfortunately, this episode of Aether Raid's offense is going to be a little shorter than usual because, as I mentioned, the really weird week I had this past light season. Regardless, I hope you enjoyed what I was able to put together for you. I personally had a lot of fun bringing out Sita in Aether Raids again. I think I might actually keep that raiding party together even after Annette leaves the bonus rotation just because the, it just works so well. The unit, or well, the units work so well together is probably a better way to phrase it, with the stats and the skills and just everything in general. So, I don't know. We'll see. I hope to see you guys at the end of next Astra season for another episode of Aether Raid's Offense. And until then, thank you so very much for watching, and I will catch you next time.